Hi, I'm Jack Stein and I'd like to welcome you to the Virtual Food Market. Now this is an add-on to the Virtual Food Festival and it's essentially in our e-commerce site. What we're going to do here is we're going to collate the best of Cornish produce into some boxes which I'm going to show you how to cook and then we can get them delivered direct to your home. So this is the Virtual Food Market Duck Box. Now all these products are from Cornwall and this is the star of the show. This is the Cornish Duck Company's duck breast and now this is from a, a breed called Terras which they've been breeding there for 15 years just outside Truro in Grand Pound Road and then literally a couple of miles down the road in St Ives is this wonderful asparagus which is fantastic and then some Trewithin Farm salted butter always got to be salted butter fantastic and a lot of you may know Cornish sea salt so we've got Cornish sea salt and pepper mix in there some shallots from Foy and these really wonderful new potatoes and Cornish new potatoes are the best in the world better than Jersey better than any other place in the world. Look at that, they've just come out, they've been harvested yesterday, and they're just so fresh. They've got this wonderful light skin, beautiful flavor, best time of the, of the year for potatoes. And then we're gonna make a vinaigrette using this really good cider vinegar from Foy Valley. And now technically this isn't really from Cornwall because it's olives, but the owner of Foy Valley, his mum has an estate in Italy, sends the olives over here and we press them here in Cornwall. So now I'm going to show you how to cook these wonderful Cornish new potatoes and these are very simple tips but honestly they're revolutionary. So most important thing with a new potato, the skin is so thin but there's a lot of flavour in it so you don't want to peel them like you would peel a, you know, a roast potato. What you want to do is just pop them in some water and give them a good rub like that just to clean off any mud but you want to keep those bits of skin still on there because they're vitally important because if you've ever eaten a, a jacket potato, all the flavour of the jacket of the potato is in the skin itself. So that's where, that's where all this wonderful flavour comes from. So just like that, look at that. You can tell it's good quality product because it's it's not perfectly shaped. It's it's a bit knobbly. And into cold water, we just do a couple of them. And then the second most important tip when cooking potatoes, any potato, you put it in cold water and you bring it up to the heat. Um, but really the most important tip is you have to season it well. So I've got some Cornish sea salt here, I'm gonna put quite a bit in there. So people say about chefs, we're just home cooks that know how to season correctly. We're gonna bring them up to the boil quickly, and then once they come up to the boil, we're gonna reduce them right down. So you want them to just bubble really gently because if you boil them, the outside of the potato will be overcooked and the inside will be still a bit undercooked. You get this kind of weird texture. So bring them up, once you see them boiling, drop them down and for this, there's about 400 grams of potatoes in there. It's gonna take about 20 minutes. So here's the duck breast. Uh, duck breast got a lot of fat in the skin. So you wanna cook that nice and slowly to render all that fat out. And also we're just gonna score it just with a knife, just in even little slits like that. And then this way as well, just to do a sort of honeycomb pattern. And we'll use some of this salt and pepper spice mix and just season it on both sides. So always lay things down away from you, like that. And this pan's not too hot, as you can hear, it's like a medium heat. I'm just gonna leave that. So whenever you're cooking anything in a pan, don't shake it around, don't move it, just leave it. Leave it with the right amount of heat. Now if this was smoking, I'd take it off the heat, but it's not, it's perfect temperature. So you're gonna render that fat down, get a lovely crispy skin and that lovely brown color. When you color it with that brown, that caramelization of the meat is actually what we really like. It's called a Maillard reaction and it causes this kind of flavor uh, profile on your tongue and in your olfactory system, which we love, you know, apart from vegetarians, obviously they don't really love it too much, but they do because actually you can get the same thing from mushrooms, from Parmesan, like these kind of like umami flavors, very, very savory. So here's the bunch of asparagus. Take the asparagus and snap it. That's the natural point at which that bottom bit's a bit woody. So then I'll just use that as a guide, just trim all that. And I wouldn't throw these away. I, I keep these and I freeze them and then make a soup out of them. They're just, you need to blitz them for quite a while. They're not so nice when you've just cooked them. So to cook the asparagus, there's a few different ways you can cook asparagus. One of the best ways is to cook it in oil. So a bit of olive oil, just because the flavor of asparagus is very water soluble. So don't ever boil it. But steaming is a really good option. So here, I've just got a pan with a tiny bit of water in the bottom. And I'm just gonna pop these spears into there like, like so, and then pop the lid on. And then when I'm ready, I'll steam that for about three minutes and then season it at the end. So put salt in at the end, very simple. So I'm just gonna make the vinaigrette, which is gonna go with the asparagus here. So I've got a shallot 
And the reason I put shallots in this box is a really famous chef called Anthony Bourdain. I was asked, what's the one ingredient that can elevate your cookery from a home cook to a chef? And he said, use shallots instead of onions because they, they are just amazing. They've got the most amazing flavor. And they're a bit fiddly to peel, but you know, it's worth the effort. These, like so, just as many times as I can get them vertically, using the little root there to hold it together. And then cut them through like that. And then just into fine dice, like so. And through them with the knife, like that. And then I'm gonna pop these into a little bowl. And then I'm gonna make the vinaigrette with a side of vinegar. Now this is definitely not, this is a uh, soy sauce, but it's great and use it instead of salt for a bit of savouriness in the vinaigrette. And then olive oil, just gonna whisk that in there. And I do that with a ratio of about uh, four parts oil to one part vinegar. Just give that a little taste. Lovely. So that's now been rendering on a low heat for about five minutes. And you can see all the oil in that pan. That's all come, I didn't put any oil in this pan to start with. That's all come from the duck itself. And so if we just turn that over, lovely golden color. And then we're just gonna cook that, raise the heat up a bit and cook that. So we'd want that to be pink. So with a, uh, a probe, like one of these things, a meat probe, we'd be wanting that to be about uh, 60 degrees. So the big tip I can give you here, with all meat, when you cook it in a pan like this, is to use a bit of butter to pop the butter in. So this butter is now at about 140 degrees, it starts to foam. So what I'm creating here is a little 140 degree oven for my meat. But I'm just able to constantly baste it, keep an eye on it, keep, you know, keep touching it, seeing how it's getting along. It's very therapeutic. This is, I mean, every single professional kitchen in the country that's cooking meat to order would be doing it like this because the butter actually forms a lovely browning, like nutty flavor as well. So it just adds an extra dimension. And you can actually add some herbs or but or garlic, you know, if you want some thyme or garlic, you put them in there and that will also add some flavor to it as well. So we're just gonna check the temperature. That's 40 degrees. So what I could do now is take that out and put it on a, a tray and then cook the rest of them. So if you're doing four for four people, you'd have two in at a time or four in at a time. Put that to one side, let it rest, and then just splash it through the oven. So what you want to do is get another 15 degrees in that. So it's going to be about a four minute in the oven, at about 200 degrees. But I'm just going to cook this all the way in the pan. And obviously, like I said, you can have four in here, no problem. And I'm just going to turn it over, have a look at it. It's browning lovely there. So we've got 58 degrees, so I'm going to let that rest now. If you don't have a probe, that's probably going to, you know, I would say five minutes to render the fat, and then it's probably another five minutes in the pan basting to get to that temperature. So I'm just going to drain the fat off and rest it there on the chopping board. If you look, I've got, you know, maybe half an inch of water in there, and the asparagus is just sat above it, but you can do it in any, any shape pan, really. Pop the lid on that. I'll season that afterwards because if I season it now, it'll look like the, uh, you know, some sort of uh, desert with loads of salt in it. <laughs> I've, I've drained and, and cooled the potatoes a little bit, um, but they're cooked. But what I'm going to show you is this is a little uh, salted butter emulsion. So it's just a way of giving the potatoes a lovely sheen. So what you do is a tiny bit of water in the bottom of the pan and then just add a bit of butter and let it, let it um, dissolve into the water and they'll start to emulsify and it'll thicken. A bit like a little mayonnaise, so a tiny bit of salt in there as well. So you see it's got all thick, it's like a nice shine. And then you just pop your potatoes in there, take it off the heat. Just give them a nice bathe in salted Cornish butter. There's nothing better than that in the potato world for me, that's as good as it gets. So they've been in there for three or four minutes. Very much al dente, but that's just how I want them. And what I'm actually gonna do now is I'm gonna pop this vinaigrette in there. So it's gonna be a warm vinaigrette. Finish them like so. And this is when the salt comes in. Take them off the heat. Just let that vinaigrette warm through. There you go.
you can slice this in a couple of ways. You can slice it traditionally like this, but the kind of chefy way of doing it is to slice it right down the middle, like so. There you got it, it's cooked perfect, medium rare, nice and pink. But add a bit of this Cornish pepper mix on there. So whenever you cook meat, you always want to finish it with the salt, because in the pan it will have lost a lot of that seasoning. And then the best friend of duck is this is a Chinese five spice. So it's just a blend of five different spices, including cinnamon, star anise, duck and five spice are great friends. So that's it, so we just plate that up. And to finish, I'm just gonna add a little bit of chutney, the fig chutney from Cornwall here. Just a bit of fruit, a bit of sweetness. 